the API to Ribbit uh, is right now targeted at Flash developers. Uh, there is an underlying um, message protocol through XML, but we've been really focused on enabling the Flash developers because we've been able to embed uh, a phone into any web page through Flash. So by using Flash, you not just get um, the ability to control calls, you actually get the ability to you receive and make calls right from the browser. So it's Flash has been kind of the I think the, the important piece of technology we've been trying to um, to leverage, as well as um, the developer community around Flash and Flex is is ex extremely um, extremely rich, and so the ability to uh, incorporate telecom, which is one of the kind of missing pieces out there, because you have full motion video, you have audio, you have rich um, interfaces you can build with these tools, but telecom was separate, so um, it seems like a natural place to. to well, we've been um, ex extremely. Um, yeah, extremely careful in our in our uh, discussion about what the platform is. This platform is a a class five soft switch for those who know, and that that means it's a switch that's equivalent to the switches that AT and T and Lucent built. In fact, we took our switch to Lucent, and they have a lab that you can pay to use, and they'll go and put it through every single test that they put their own switching equipment through. We put our switch through that same test, and it was certified as um, as reliable as the kind of equipment they they built, five nines, those kind of things. So, this is a, a heavy duty piece of technology equivalent to anything that here in the US an AT&T or MCI or Sprint would deploy, um, but in our hosted environment in a next generation um, a view of it. So it's, it's definitely not a bunch of asterisk servers linked together. Um, then on top of that, uh, the other piece that people um, kind, of, kind of miss is the operation side. So on top of this platform we have, we have a 24 by seven um, support team. We have over 10,000 automated tests a day that we run on the switch, testing all the different interfaces, the flash interfaces, the interfaces into the PSDN, all those things. Um, those are those are all parts of what we do. We have a, a billing system that, that we use and that we actually let our developers uh, leverage. So, um, and then finally we have a security model that when you actually deploy an application, uh, you get security tokens that you can embed that actually um, tell us uh, as a switch what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do as an application so you can protect your application against people um, you know, trying to use it in ways you don't want. So that's, uh, there's a whole ton of things around what Ribbit's about and, and when we call ourselves a Silicon Valley phone company, we take the phone company part really, really serious. Um, we launched the APIs, um, we opened them up uh, for developers back in September. And um, September through um, last week, um, we had over 650 developers building applications and um, taking the API and doing things with it. So we've been iterating on seeing how people have been doing, what features they've been asking. So um, coming in uh, early 2008, um, probably the first, second week of, um, of January, we're coming out with our beta 2 release, which incorporates uh, a lot of, of the feedback that developers have said, we want this, we want that. Um, so it's still in that, 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 that um, proving ground in terms of what is, a, is the exact API that people really want to use. That said, um, we have, um, boy, you know, a dozen or so applications that developers are ready, that are ready to launch. So those all will be launching um, probably almost coincident with the, with the new, new release. So a traditional phone switch connects to the phone network, wireless, wireline, those kind of things. Um, and then there, and there's standards for how you connect to voice over IP networks using protocols like SIP and, and stuff. And, and we try not to use those words with our developers um, because it really is kind of bits and bytes and it's not really that exciting if I'm building an application to un understand what's what's going on. But what we did find from our developers is that um, they wanted to be able to connect to other web um, enabled communications. And the most common of those are the IM clients that uh, have included voice. So that would be Skype, Google Talk, uh, MSN, um, and Yahoo are, are four of the very popular ones. So um, with Ribbit, those are just other phones that you can connect to. So you, uh, you could actually you know, put calls out to from the a wireless phone into Google Talk if you wanted, or you can connect Skype to MSN, or you can connect your browser to you know Yahoo. That that end-to-end -end -end connections, that's what our switch is really really good at. And uh, what we do for the developer though is we just kind of hide that uh, that fact. Uh, if you get it, if you think about Flash and Flex developers um, like at least what I, I like out of out of it is is when you're using Flash and Flex, you're working at, at objects at a higher level. If I want to load an image, I say load load an image, and it doesn't matter if it's a JPEG, if it's a GIF, it's a bitmap, who cares what the format of that is. I want to load it and I want to stretch it or trim it or do whatever. That's what Flash and Flex are really good at, all that manipulation. So we've taken the same mentality with, with telephony, saying, okay, well you know you have these different types of protocols and these different types of endpoints, 
you don't have to worry about it. Just, you know, you want to make a call to that endpoint, we'll handle all, all that work for you. If you want to um, send a piece of text to that endpoint, and that endpoint happens to be an IM client, you get a piece of text. If it happens to be a cell phone, you get an SMS. So those those abstraction layers are, are really what um, the switch is good for, and it's also what Flex is good for. Business model is um, pretty straightforward. Uh, end of the day, um, we want our developers to make make money. So, um, so we are looking at um, you know giving models that let developers have enough room to monetize. So the the simple model is that you as a as a developer come on and to get the development package and start developing doesn't cost anything. Download the API, make calls, test your application, go go for it. When you're ready to deploy, there's a certification process. Certification process essentially does a couple of things. One, you you check out the application, make sure everything is is okay. We give you your security tokens and stuff. Um, but then there's a pricing model. Um, so if you're building a commercial application, uh, for a, we, the, the base price for a simple commercial application that we call it is $29 um, US. You get 20 simultaneous sessions, um, so you can have up to 20 simultaneous calls going on that application, plus any PSDN usage um, at $0.05 cents a minute. And so as a developer, then you can package that up and, and if you want to resell the time at $0.06 cents a minute, if you want to sell it to your customer at you know, at a bundle, that's up, up to you. So national and international, five cents a minute. Um, well, international is at international rates. We okay. use, um, uh, you know, we have a number of different PSDN connections, so the rates are, are competitive with any other long distance. Um, as we move forward in time, we will actually start expanding internationally, and in that case, then we can optimize that 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 cost. Um, so, and then there's the other side is these. Um, so there's a bunch of people building these commercial applications that. Um, they're charging for and telephony just creates it more more adds more value to it. Then there's a number of developers who are building very interesting um, gadgets, widgets, integrations into things that um, maybe aren't commercial. And in that case, um, we are looking to help them monetize those applications um, and, and distribute them um, for a, a social uh, side. And, and then we'll talk about more of that uh, in the uh, next couple There's a bunch of different types of ways people have been doing voice on the web. So companies like Skype, have um, they give you a client that you can download, and then the client installs some sort of plugin into your browser. And, and if you find a number, you can click on a number, and it, it actually activates. It makes a call through Skype. Um, that's great, you know, if you use Skype and things, but it doesn't integrate with your, your application. There's no feedback. It's, it's not like your application can control that call, can produce, um, can go back and do other things with that call, like transfer it or um, record it or do all these other interesting things. In fact, actually, uh, just to be clear, you know, calling is just one of the elements that we expose inside Flash. We also expose uh, messaging. So that voicemail system that your um, your phone carrier has, um, we've kind of ripped that apart too, such that you have through Flash um, access to uh, messaging, uh, create a message, you know, retrieve a message, store a message, the meta information about the message, who called, how long it is, um, and things like being able to transcribe the message. So we can take the message and turn it into text. Now that's in text, you can send it off as an email, as an IM, as an SMS. Um, you can make it searchable. So there's much more to, to, to Ribbit than just calls. It's actually uh, a series of functions and services that normally a phone company would keep behind their walled garden that we're opening up to, to developers as, as components. There are companies that make a widget that do a two-legged call. So you, you click on it, you enter your phone number, you enter the number of uh, someone you want to call, and then it places um, both legs and it connects you together. Um, but again, that's just trying to bypass, um, you know, making cheaper phone calls, trying to bypass the PSDN and using IP as a middle, middle transport for, for cheaper calls. Yeah, what we're really trying to do is um, let people in integrate voice into the workflows and the applications they're, they're building, not just trying to provide a cheaper way of making, making phone calls. So Adobe Pacifica is actually some really great, great technology that they've been been building, and actually um, we're looking forward to when they actually incorporate it into into Flash, um, because it essentially right now it's working as as a peer to peer voice communication. That's what they're trying to to enable with, but higher fidelity codecs than they have today. So for for us, we're really about um, taking these services, not just calling, but all those services. So if Adobe includes higher fidelity codecs and other protocols that we can use to connect to Flash, that's great for, for both of us. So um, we really believe it's, it's complement, complementary.